From the campus at Fridley High School, we proudly present another edition of High School Girls Basketball. Tonight's matchup is a Section 4 3A duel between two teams looking to make a run to the state tournament. The Fridley Tigers host the Coma Park Cougars. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for joining us as always. This is a matchup that will feature the top two three-point shooters in the state. You have Suzanne Gilreath with 74 triples entering tonight and Michaela Van Nett at 71. That's based on our last check. Suzanne Gilreath also leading the state in scoring and she is not a secret these days. Last year she set the single season record for most three-pointers with 122 and is on pace to, the, to do that this year. But another aspect is trying to get her to play a little more inside and diversify her offensive game. We'll see how that pans out tonight, but you can't dispute the 28.8 points that Gilreath has put up. On Como Zen, we talk about Michaela Van Nett. She stepped up averaging 17 a game. And for that reason, Andrea Adams, the top player for Como Park, who's headed to St. John's, has fallen out of the top 10 in scoring. But when you have support for the likes of Van Nett and Alayda Jones, who's averaging over 10 points a game, you don't necessarily have to put up 50 points to keep your team in contention. This is also by design, as Como Park, knowing they have a reasonable chance of making the state tournament field, they want to get as many players prepared as possible because they understand when you get to state, you're facing deep, tough teams, and they don't want any surprises coming their way. That being said, Como Park is on a winning streak, and outside of this game, have been running the tables as of late. This figures to be their last tune-up, along with the Twin Cities game, if everything goes accordingly before the playoffs begin. The starting lineups are coming up in a moment. This is High School Girls Basketball. to Fridley High School. Following the conclusion of the National Anthem, let's take a look at the starting five. For the visiting St. Paul Coma Park Cougars, it's Asia Shepard, the junior forward, number one. Rain Adams, the sophomore guard, number 11. Her big sister, Andrea Adams, the senior forward, number 15. Elena Jones, the freshman center, number 24. And Michaela Van Nett, the sophomore guard, number 32. Fridley will start. Olivia Hawkins, the sophomore forward, number two. Suzanne Gilry, the senior guard, number three. Talia Frazier, the freshman guard, number five. Abby Dean, the senior guard, number 11. And Anna Schwint, the junior forward, number 15. And now we'll start A couple of items of note affecting Fridley. One of their top scorers, Brooke Teff, who is averaging 17.8, unable to play tonight as she fell ill. And Suzanne Gilreath, suffering from a case of strep throat and pink eye, got examined at a minute clinic, but said she was going to sweat through this. And the reason is Suzanne Gilreath and Andrea Adams are teammates 
from AAU play. They both played on the Charity Warriors organization that is run by Andrea's father, Patrick. And those two, ever since the schedules were put together, the two were talking smack, having fun. They were really looking forward to this matchup. But this may not be the only time that Andrea and Suzanne go head to head. They are both in section four, 3A as we mentioned. If the season were to end now, Fridley would likely take the six seed. Como Park would take the one and get a first round bye. Como Park, the favorite at this point to win in that section, but there's a sense of unpredictability as to who would come out on top in that bracket. Because you have Hill Murray, a team that struggled a bit, but you always have to keep an eye on them. De La Salle having a pretty strong year. Tatino Grace has fallen off lately, but they had some pretty good early wins. And Fridley, for the most part, has been playing through this season with a lot of injuries and just some inconsistencies in their roster. And, uh, and while that certainly doesn't help for cohesion, Eric Redepending, the head coach, said it will provide some benefits later in the year. We'll talk more about that as this game goes along. Coma Park having a little bit of trouble. Asia Shepard not an over-the-back call because her body did not cross the back court or the half-court line completely. You can step forward and step back as long as your body does not completely cross the timeline. That is legal. Coma wearing the white, Fridley wearing the black. This is the last non-conference game of the season for the Cougars. And Asia Shepard gets on the board, hitting the elbow J. The last non-conference game, barring the Twin Cities game. Andrea Adams with the steal and the run out. Andrea Adams pickpockets her close personal friend. And the Cougars are off to a 4-0 start. Wild shot goes off the rim for Olivia Hawkins. And here comes Rain Adams. Rain to Michaela for three. Bullseye. As we know to Michaela Van Nett, 71 three-pointers. Suzanne Gilreed at our last count is Fridley with a turnover. Suzanne Gilreed with 74. There is a chance, depending on how far the two teams are, get into the playoffs because playoffs, well, that was ruled a deflection, so Fridley hangs on to it. There is a chance that Michaela or Suzanne could threaten the single season mark that Gilry set last year. Unable to get the roll was Talia Frazier. Vanette finds Rain. Rain and one. And Como Park displaying authority here in the first 90 seconds. They've scored nine points already. Rain Adams, the younger sister of Andrea, also has a twin brother who is involved in basketball and football for Como Park. The one thing that hurt them was having to forfeit the first two games of the year at Hamlin due to player ineligibility. And Suzanne Gilreath having trouble. She does find a target in Frazier. And I'll finish up that part about Como Park in a moment. Suzanne Gilreath fires from 15 and hits. And Fridley is on the board. In the case of Como, those two forfeits, of course, stats get thrown out. It didn't do much in terms of Andrea's average. What it did do as she drives to the hole and puts it in. It delayed her quest for 3,000 because she scored 45 points in those two games and the forfeits wiped them out. So entering tonight, Andrea's total was 2,897. She should get to 3,000 without any difficulty, but uh, the celebration will have to come into uh, later in the season. We have a scramble for the ball. A jump is called and Fridley with the arrow. 15-34 left in the first half and Como Park with an 11-2 lead. Frazier to inbound. Goes deep. Schwint kicks out. Gillery for three. That rims out. And Van Neck is fouled by Frazier.
Como with the possession. Bounce pass from Rain Adams to Elena Jones is good for two. And Eric Redepenning is going to call a timeout. 13 to 2 is the score. And again, not the circumstances he was anticipating entering this matchup. In fact, he had all of his players available for Fridley's win over Patrick Henry on Saturday, a game that Fridley won rather easily, 69-37. Coma Park, as we noted, on a big winning streak, they've won six in a row, and 11 of their last 12, the one loss in that stretch was to Minnehaha Academy, but not getting much competition within their conference. But it does demonstrate how far Coma Park has progressed because in the last 12 games, they've had big wins, including Bloomington Kennedy. They came back from a significant deficit over Simley, took down Chanhassen and Farmington, beat Woodbury by a close margin. A lot of quality wins for the Cougars. And that might pen them as a favorite to get to the state tournament bracket. Coma Park entering tonight, the number eight team in the polls. Now what they do if they were to get that far, who knows, and the first objective is getting there, and there are gonna be some teams who wanna knock them off, De La Salle among them. Como Park just stripping the ball with impunity. Rain Adams with the steal there, Vanette launches the three, and it's short. The rebound goes to Suzanne Gilry, she's got a two on one. She will skip, and Rain Adams gets there in time for the deflection. Rain Adams, known for her feistiness on defense. Fake. Long rainbow three is off, and the rebound to Anna Schwinn. Fridley will try again. This time it's a runner, and banking it in is Talia Frazier for her first basket. Frazier averaging just over five a game. Rain Adams with the skip to Van Nett. Bullseye. If you're keeping track, Vanette has 73 triples now, one away from Suzanne's mark. Now the, well, we've got a steal, and Vanette is going to head out to Shepard. Como will have to run a set play. Andrea, the deep three, is off. I imagine Suzanne has a few more threes to her total. The stats from the Henry game haven't been tabulated yet, but Gilry showing her flashiness on drives as well. She puts that one in. She's up to four. Suzanne Gilry headed to Wisconsin, as you may know. Andrea, the 15 footer off the screen, swish. And Andrea with six. 18 to six is our score in favor of the Cougars. Coma Park trying the full court, and they do force a tough shot from Hawkins. That gives Como another chance. Vanette weaves, comes up short, gets her own miss. And now Shepard will launch the three. It was a little bit short, though. Hawkins with the rebound, almost traveled. Suzanne Gillery, she'll step into the three, and there's her first of triple of the night. And 30 seconds now. And calling a timeout there was Alexis Gray Lawson, not liking what she's seeing there, even though her team is up by nine, 18 to nine. Suzanne Gilreath, in the words of Eric Redepenning, continues to get better throughout her varsity career, spends a ton of time in the game, on the game, in the gym. She'll take shoot around sessions before and after games. And he said where Suzanne has grown the most is her willingness to go inside because most opponents know she can shoot three-pointers and she can still hit those with proficiency as demonstrated this year. So now the focus is trying to make defense, uh, her defenders more weary of leaving a lane open. We're back to action, Andrea Adams hits the fadeaway J. And she has a quick eight points. 29 is our score. Hawkins used up the dribble, goes to Schwint, fires from 13, banks it in. Schwint 
Averaging 4.9 points per game, but one of the better rebounders on the team. She blocks Andrea Adams, but then ends up losing it. And Andrea Adams will get a transition bucket as Abby Dean lost the ball. Hawkins traveled, and she's had some trouble stopping herself. It's been all Como Park in the first half, 22 to 11. I was going to say Schwent averaging 10 rebounds a game, the highest on the team. But Brooke Teff was behind her at 8.3. And you can tell Fridley is missing her presence. But as we noted in the open, Rain Adams' drive is short. As we noted in the open, the plus side to the injuries and absences, you get to see a lot of new faces, including some players who will take over once folks like Suzanne graduate. And Ebony Davis lays it in, showing a little shiftiness on that last possession. So Davis is on the board. Rain Adams throws up a prayer and gets the shooting motion, so she'll get free throws. The foul will be charged to Dean, her first personal. Rain Adams entering this game, 6.2, her season high 17. Not known as an offensive threat for the Cougars, but again, her defense is her selling point. That being said, even when Andrea graduates, following this Como Park team as much as I have, there are some pieces to indicate that Como will not fall off the radar like a lot of teams do when big name players graduate. Well, Rain Adams will be hit with a foul as they try to double team Suzanne Gilreath. That is her first and the first foul assessed to the Cougars. Rebecca Hausman on the floor now for Como Park. Gilreath from the corner. That's off. Elena Jones with the rebound. Vanette, look out. Her third triple of the game. Vanette with 74 now in the season. Andrea with the steal. She pickpockets Dean. The skip to Hausman goes up and is too strong. Missed opportunity for the Cougars there, but they still have a 12-point lead. New player in, it's Katrina Moraz for the Tigers. And Fridley throws it away. Rain, bounce to Vanette. She's feeling it. Michaela with four triples. Suzanne pushed to the baseline, stays in bounds, fires the three, but is strong, and Hausman doing a good job staying on her. Vanette passes to Adams to avoid a potential double dribble, and she runs into Schwint and gets the foul call. As you know, Coma Park, a team that really likes to push the ball this year. Alexis Gray Lawson in her first season as head coach, emphasizing speed and agility and using a pressure defense to translate to a fast break offense. Dean picks up her second personal foul. If you're wondering the way Van Nett is shooting, her season high is 32. Andrea Adams splits from the line, and Como Park is just throttling the Tigers. Again, Fridley competing without one of their top players. Fridley wins the scrum, and finishing the play is Mraz. Talia Frazier unintentionally deflected the ball. Andrea Adams' step back three is strong. Frazier's deflection went off her head, but the Tigers did able to come up with it. Frazier loses the dribble, though, and a jump ball. That means Como gets it on the arrow. Ball control has been problematic for the Tigers thus far. 
9.50 left in the first half. Como with a 29-15 lead. As we noted before, all St. Paul City Conference opponents after this for the Cougars, and there's nobody who seems that they can get in the way of a second straight conference title. Hausman cleans up Andrea's miss. More pressure. Mraz in trouble. And she gets the timeout call just in time. But there's no question who is the more dominant team right now. And if you're wondering just how valuable Brooke Teff is, we've talked about her numbers. She was all conference in the Tri-Metro last year. She crossed the 1,000 point mark last month for her career and embraced the inside job that Retta Penning gave her after playing on the outside for most of her varsity career and often collects the garbage that other players miss and so when you don't have that presence who can get the second chance opportunities in that can really hurt you especially with a team as speedy as Como Park so that's what they're missing but again it means you get to see some new faces and Retta Penning has noted that seeing the mixture of veterans and new players who will take over in future years has been fun to guide. That deflection went off the official. And since the official is out of bounds, the play is ruled dead. Friendly will hang on to it. 9.08 left, and we certainly don't want to give Coma Park the win just yet, as we've seen teams struggle only to rally back. We saw that in our last broadcast when Minneapolis North almost came back from 15 down. A, whoa! <laughs> Tylea Frazier was off balance, threw up a prayer, and drains it. Unusual way to get your second basket of the game, but Fridley will take it. Andrea. Looking off a couple of screens. She'll go to Cindy Jackson. Shepard missing, and Hausman will be called for the foul. Hawkins and Schwint return to the floor for Fridley. They trail by 14. The biggest difference right now Vanette with four threes, Suzanne with one. And again, they double team her. But they leave Frazier open. And Hausman picks up her second foul. So Como's strategy, again, with Brooke Teff unable to play. Como, it's clear they're going to hassle Suzanne Gilreath as much as they can and force Fridley's other players to step up. Frazier at the line, averaging five points a game. 2.7 rebounds and 3.8 assists. Short there. She's a good ball handler, really likes to pass. She's a freshman, so Reda Penning noted some nights are chaotic, but he expects her to be a huge factor for the Tigers in the coming years. Needs a little more oomph on her free throw shots though. She comes up short. And an empty possession for the Tigers. Andrea Adams can't hit from 15. Suzanne Gilbert with the rebound. Weaving through. She's fouled by Andrea. And the ball almost gets stuck in the support beam. So Suzanne Gilbert, the state's leading scorer, will head to the line. 28.8. She was in the top 10 last year. Not the tallest player out there, but her three-point shooting is something we're going to remember for years to come. Suzanne Gilreath, not surprisingly, will finish her varsity career as Fridley's all-time leading scorer, a record that stood for 25 years. Nicole Johnson held that mark. 
finishing her career in 1990. She makes both free throws. That pushes her total to nine. But Fridley's down by 12. Vanette. The stutter step doesn't work. And an over-the-back foul on Shepard. So now fouls are starting to affect Como Park here. And Fridley, well, they're not out of this yet. They're down by 12. They can get a few baskets their way. They'll be in position to make a run. Ebony Davis picked off by Adams. And Davis does the wise thing and fouls her before she has a chance to shoot. Fridley wasn't in the penalty yet, so they'll force Como to run a set play, but that's the difficulty when you have players not as experienced at moving the ball up. Andrea out to Van Nett. Three ball. Can up in the corner. Offensive rebound for Andrea. Van Nett. Entry pass to Shepard. She'll go back out. Now she'll fire to Jones. And getting the deflection was Frazier. So Fridley starting to settle down a bit after Como's transition game was blistering in the opening minutes. Andrea steps into a three. Bullseye. That is just the 20th three-pointer of the season. And Gilreath can't handle the pass. So Como gets another possession without having to move. Andrea out to Van Nett. Three on the way. That's strong. Van Nett has missed her last three from the arc. Andrea. She can't hit either. Davis with the rebound. Davis. She binks it in. Fridley very efficient at using the backboard. Now Andrea getting harassed. And that's going to be a foul on Olivia Hawkins. I believe that is her first. And that is Fridley's last to give. It is the first on Olivia Hawkins. Six fifty-two left in the first half. Como Park leads 34-21. Vanette having trouble, and Rain Adams able to chase the ball down before it goes out of bounds. And that's a foul on Talia Frazier, her second. Bridley in the penalty now. But they send a player to the line who is not all that effective in terms of offense. So we'll see what happens. Rain Adams, who has just two points, missed her first two free throws, will try to extend this Como Park lead. Vanette will take a breather. Rain Adams, it's both. Pushes her total to four. In her place is Autumn Tucker. And Suzanne Gilry forced out of bounds by her sister. I believe they're half-sisters officially, but Autumn Tucker Unable to take part in the conditioning drills during the offseason, and so they've been working to get her back in game shape. Tucker showed some signs last year. And the sophomore guard. Not tall in stature, but could be a building block of the future for the Cougars. Adams, keeping the dribble alive, fires the elbow J, and that's off the mark. Asia Shepard with the O-board, finds Jones, and she's blocked. Jones uh, will not recover it. Jump ball, forced by Schwent, Fridley with the arrow. Suzanne, they gotta get her going. Deep three. 
off the mark. Davis, the skip, and Schwint scores. Anna Schwint with four points, 36-23. Andrea for three. And she and Van Nett have been off. Suzanne Gilreath with the steal. She's all alone. Goodbye. Gilreath with just one three. Coma will call timeout, but Gilreath hanging in there. She has 11 points. And that last play indicative of her colorful demeanor on the court. Reda Penning noted that uh, she's a colorful player to watch, and that often attracts attention. She made waves last year with her three-point prowess. And if you're wondering how she and Andrea met, uh, they would take part in some tournaments and got to know each other. And then when Susanna tried out for Patrick's AAU team, the Charity Warriors, that's when Andrea and Suzanne really got to know each other and they've bonded ever since. The two are best of friends. They haven't spoken to each other too much in the lead up to this game. But part of that is, of course, they both have school and need to stay on top of their academics, among other things. But when this game came up on the calendar, I spoke with both players and they were excited. There's some perspiration that is being wiped up from the court. Suzanne would go to the practices at Coma Park and would talk some smack to Andrea and then she would retaliate with, well, this is my gym. <laughs> We're in Fridley's gym here, but those two, along with their parents, were looking forward to this matchup and they know just how much it means for two friends to play against each other and perhaps get a chance to test their skills if those two are to see each other in NCAA competition next year. Andrea going to St. John's, Suzanne going to Wisconsin, so the entry pass to Shepard, that doesn't work, she'll kick out and Autumn Tucker will come up short on the three-pointer. Rebound Schwint. Fridley can draw this within 10, but Rain Adams snipes Gilreath from behind. Andrea. She's not going to give up. But she's missed her last five shots now. Tucker on the second try. That's off. And that's going to be a dead ball rebound to Fridley. So Como in a, in a shooting run here. And this slump could open the door for Fridley to come back as most shooting slumps do. Suzanne Gilreath can't bank it in. Hawkins with the O-board. She can't bank it in either. D'Angela Pernell's in the game for the Tigers, number 23. Rain Adams tries to go baseline, spin move past Dean, gets the bounce. Hawkins weaves through. Too strong. Purnell with the putback. Purnell with the first field goal. Margin still 11. Adams the shovel to rain. Andrea. With the skip to Rain Adams and sister, sister on that play. Andrea has been averaging about six or seven assists a game as of late. Rain Adams playing very closely to Suzanne. She does get it across the timeline, but again, they're double teaming here anytime she touches the ball. Trying to limit her touches. Andrea with the steal. Autumn Tucker can't control it. Suzanne almost pokes it away. And Tucker does eventually Assume control of the rock. Shepard to Jones, inside the line. Can't hit it. 
Como with the arrow after Ebony Davis and Rain Adams were tangled up. Vanette returns to the floor. Como Park still leads by 13. Coming up at halftime, we'll have Kevin Anderson, the assistant coach at Stillwater, and the scouting expert for KJASR to give us a mid-season report. Andrea looking for Van Nett. The pass was too high. Gilreath is bumped by Van Nett. That is Como's last foul to give. And that will be the first personal on Van Nett. Actually, her second. Davis used up the dribble, and Purnell with a tough angle as Jones was breathing down her neck. Andrea, one on one, collides with Suzanne. Count it! Andrea. Getting the best of her AAU teammate thus far. 42-27, and Como with a chance to extend the lead. Andrea Adams, even with the recent shooting slump, an impressive first half figure, 17 points. And we know she can put up big numbers. Suzanne with the double team that Como has put on her. Gets out of it this time, takes the three. Makes the three. Fredley needed that one. Suzanne Gilreath with 14. That is her second triple. Vanette with the answer. No. Adams, oh board. And she'll get the second chance points. Andrea with 19 in the first half, unofficially. Suzanne. Here comes the double again. This time it translates to a steal as Hausman picks it up. Vanette is fouled, she'll shoot two. Purnell will be charged with the foul. Michaela Vanette, 17.6 points per game. Her season high is 32, and if you remember, there were glimpses of her talent last year. She hit some big baskets in the Twin Cities game with Washburn, the first trip that Como had ever made to help them win. And now she's become an effective second option for the Cougars. And I imagine when Andrea graduates next year, Van Nett will take over the leadership mantle. She splits there. Dean, one-on-one -on -one with Hausman. And the blocking foul is called. The official said Hausman wasn't set in time, so Dean with her first field goal. Hausman picks up her third personal. And Abby Dean can get a three-point play here. Dean doesn't score a lot. Just three and a half a game. Doesn't get the free throw there, but Fridley doing what they can to stay in contention. Jones is blocked. Battle for the ball won by Hausman. Van Nett, corner three. Short. Sydney Jackson with the rebound. And she is hacked. Free throws coming. Fridley with 10 fouls now. Two free throws for the double bonus. And Dean picks up her third personal. Sydney Jackson, the eighth grader. Averaging 5.3 a game. Dean, as you can imagine, heads back to the bench. Jackson splits. Davis runs into a jump ball. Fridley with the arrow. 155 left in the first half. The give and go from Gilreath to Davis. Davis up to six. 
If you're wondering, Gil Reith averages two and a half assists a game. Frazier with the steal. Once again, Fridley has a chance to get some momentum. Schwinn in trouble. Loses the ball to Andrea Adams. Andrea, coast to coast, banks it in. 21 points for Andrea. Andrea won't win the scoring race this year. Oh my, Hawkins had an open lane and blows the layup. Andrea kicks out. Van Nett couldn't get the pass cleanly. She'll fire the two, and we have a foul away from the ball. Ebony Davis hit with the foul. Much to her dismay, it's her second personal. Elena Jones will shoot two. Elena Jones averaging 10.6 a game. And Jones, an undersized post player, but very gritty. Splits. Como has been doing a lot of splitting at the line, but they've been able to maintain their advantage. They lead by 16, 50 to 34. And Asia Shepard with some strong baseline defense, forcing Hawkins into a turnover. And that's where Como has excelled. But Frazier with the steal right back. She'll take it to the rim, but she's out of control. Gilreath cleans it up. Suzanne Gilreath hasn't been able to get open from behind the arc, but she's made up for it in other elements. Rain Adams, she'll take a three. Bullseye! Rain Adams with 11 points now, and the Cougars up by 17. Hawkins in trouble. And once again, Como's baseline defense forcing another turnover. Rain to Andrea. Como's not going to hold for the last shot, but Van Nett misses the triple. When you're up by 17, though, not a huge risk. Rain Adams pickpockets Frazier. The two collide. Van Nett, one on one. Can't draw the foul on Davis, but she'll get the bucket. Van Nett with 17. Hawkins in trouble. Loses the ball again. That's three straight turnovers on Olivia Hawkins. And Como will have another chance. They can end this first half the clock. Now it's going. Plenty of time to get a shot off. You know Andrea's going to take it if she can get a look. There it is. This is the three, but a minor bump in an otherwise dominant first half. The Coma Park Cougars with a 55-36 lead over the Fridley Tigers. So we'll take a break and bring Kevin Anderson with us for the halftime interview and we'll come back with first half stats and analysis. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Coma Park leads Fridley 55-36. And I'm joined by Kevin Anderson, the guy who's seemingly at every basketball game imaginable. Well, not quite, but uh, you do your best to get all the top teams in. Yeah, I hit two games this weekend, one in Duluth and then one in Perm, so I put some miles on. Well, that seems to be an annual case for you. Uh, we talked a little bit before the game, both these teams in Section 4-3, and you feel that overall this could be a very entertaining section when we get to the playoffs. Check, 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 check. Yeah, but right now Como is right now the top team in this section. And, you know, I know Totino and, and Hill Murray and De La Salle, those are strong power teams, been to the finals in the state 3A tournaments. And then you got Fridley. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be a gauntlet to run it. But Como has the firepower, it looks to me. 
to succeed. And as you know, Como hasn't been to the state tournament yet, so that intangible might come into effect, but you can't deny their talent. All right, these kids have played together in the summer, and they've had big game experience, so they're not phased by what's going to happen. Another class that maybe has opened up uh, 4A, uh, Hopkins getting knocked off by STMA Minnetonka, but, uh, you know, of course they have the experience and the know-how, but a lot of uh, good teams in that field. Yeah, I think the 4A is going to be a battle down to the 5 seed. You know, it's there will be a good 6 or 7 seed, I think, this year in the state. Other years it's been pretty much 5 and then it drops off. I can see a, a legitimate six saying, hey, we should have been a five or a four, or maybe even a seven seed being in the same position. Does Hopkins still have the edge, or are there some other teams who could give them a run? Hopkins is going to be strong. You know, Shockby, and that's going to be a good game on Thursday this week. Uh, you know, Shockby might not get to state because Minnetonka is in the same section. That's pretty strong section. Uh, Hopkins should make it to state this year. Um, and then you got section one and section eight. Those are strong sections. East U section is strong. So, I mean, there's a lot of good sections out there. And then in class 2A, uh, maybe a bit of a topsy-turvy one there. Uh, Dover Riota a little off their perch, but you never quite know what can happen over there. Uh, that's going to be a wide open class. A lot of teams will have a stake on the five seed and they won't get it, so there could be a real good eight seed that could be a five, that they think should be a five. So it's going to be a strong, and the same with Class A. There's going to be good teams all over in that sec, you know, in that class too. Well, that could make for some great first-round games uh, when we get to March. Yeah, uh, it's going to be, I think, good quarters all up and down. Maybe 3A, maybe not as much. I can see some blowouts in the quarters there, but uh, definitely good quarters in fourth, two, and one. What are some observations you've noticed this year? Of course, you are an assistant coach at Stillwater, and then you still go to a, a bunch of other games. So, anything you picked up on that stands out this year? Not necessarily. Um, I think that the, it's going to be a balanced field, and people are still competitive, still trying to. This is a home stretch here in February. This is where the, the better teams start separating themselves. And I'm looking to see that in the next three weeks. And then we'll wrap things up with this game here. And you've covered a lot of games, so stats maybe don't mean that much. But when you have the top two three-point shooters in this game with Suzanne Gilreath and Michaela Van Nett, and that's just the tip, uh, what does that say about maybe the depth of talent in this team or in the state where you've got a lot of uh, good name players. Como has a lot more depth, and, you know, and Fridley's today is without one of their thousand point scores, so it's going to impact their performance, but 55 points, that's that's a defensive issue, and but the speed and quickness of Como is going to really cause a lot of problems in 3A. And it's going to make for a very entertaining sectional round, and if they get to state, who knows, but uh, I, I see them being a seeded team, whoever comes out of this section. And, uh, you know, you got Orno and you got Winona and Cass. And so Como's right there right now. They, to me, they look like a three seed. Well, we'll see where they're seeded. Of course, you can find this guy at Stillwater Games and online at KJASR.com, where he's always up to, the, up to date with his stats and other figures and observations. So. Thanks for speaking with us, and uh, perhaps we'll see your team in state if uh, you get lucky enough. It's going to be uh, an interesting <laughs> postseason. <laughs> Kevin, Ad Kevin Anderson of KJASR.com. We'll be back with the second half in a moment. And we rejoin you at Fridley High School as we continue our coverage of high school girls basketball. I'm Mike Peden here, and... Como Park has been all over the Fridley Tigers with a 55-36 edge, but as we noted, Brooke Teff unable to play tonight due to an illness, and that tips the scales in Como's favor when you don't have a score and rebounder of her caliber on the floor. First half numbers, these are unofficial, but Andrea Adams has 21 points. Maybe showcasing the Andrea we saw last year. Michaela Van Nett with 17, including four threes, and Rain Adams with 11. Those are your notables. 
Fridley getting 16 points out of Suzanne Gilreath, but those points have been hard-earned ones. Como sending double teams at her every time she brings the ball up court, and for the most part, doing a good job of sealing the arc. Ebony Davis with six, but not too many other notables in the case of Fridley, and that's got to change if they're going to come back in the second half. They've come within 11 a few times, and then Como's speed and agility just overwhelms them. In any case, it's going to be a very fun state tournament. I think it's going to be much more open than previous years, where, especially in 4A, where Hopkins could ride into the sunset. Bannett will do just that from three-point range as he hits from the corner pocket. And a steal. But Andrea ends up throwing it away. And that was last touched by Como, so Fridley will hang on to it. Nope, they reversed the call, so. Andrea, quick three, and that's in. Coma Park not fooling around. They take a 25-point lead. Suzanne turns on the accelerator and backs off. Shakes her defender and comes up short from the baseline. Shepard with the rebound. Andrea, another three. That's off. Rain Adams with the O-board. Can't draw the foul. Dead ball rebound to Fridley. And we've got Kevin's partner in crime, Tim Tease, here in attendance. A lot of big names in the scouting world are at this game. And Will Frazier, that was a smart play. She sensed her balance would take her out of bounds, so she bounces it off of Van Nett, who couldn't control it herself. And because she was the last one to touch it, Fridley hangs on to it. And they get the outlet pass, hooked up for Gilreath for the score. If they can get Suzanne in the open, that's where she's the most dangerous, but Fridley's got a long way to go. They're down by 23. Skip pass to Shepard for the deuce. Andrea Adams with the assist. And she steals it. Oh my goodness, Andrea Adams is everywhere. And another timeout for Fridley. Como Park not fooling around. This ring shades of a game I covered earlier this year between Maranatha and Mideota where Maranatha started the second half on a surge and the game ended in running time. Meanwhile, our camera operator is paying his homage to the theme from Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> what can I say? He's a cinephile. But I'll tell you who's insane. Andrea Adams with 26 points. I'm also insane, but that's already been established. Andrea, we mentioned, needs 103 to hit 3,000. When she'll cross that mark is hard to say. And the reason that's hard to say is because they simply don't play the, uh, the starters that much in these conference games. Not when you have results like a 93-30 win over Johnson. Frazier, behind the back bounce to Schwint, and she puts it in. So Fridley's still getting some plays in, but they've already given up 10 points in about a minute 15 seconds. And Andrea looking to add to that figure. Three-pointer rims out. Andrea may not win the scoring title this year, but she has no concern about her field goal percentage. And shooters, that's what you're told to do. Don't worry about the percentages. Just keep shooting. Frazier evades the double team, regains control. And I believe this is going to be the first set play we see out of the Tigers. Suzanne Gilreath on the bench right now and Andrea baseline off to Shepard she'll shoot two the foul is on Frazier her third and Shepard with four points will shoot a pair she averages 5.3 a game transferred from Hardy and Gilreath is going to go back in. Three, 
Shepard splits. She's up to five. There's one weakness, or black mark on Como Park's performance tonight. It's the free throw shooting. Shepard called for holding. It's amazing what those basket mics can pick up. In any case, it's a foul on Como Park. There's the double on Gilreath again. Davis has it. She's going to go up against Van Nett. No, Gilreath can't put it in. Schwinn is fouled. She'll shoot two. The foul is on Elena Jones, her first. Schwint doesn't score much. And Retta Penning has noted that is something he's been working on over the years. Last year, in the case of Schwint, she's, who's a junior, she'd get a rebound and automatically kick out to Suzanne. And now she's starting to buy into trying to get missed shots and turn them into putbacks. She splits there, though, and Bradley's going to need to do better than that if they're going to come back from 25 down. Coma Park leads 66-41. And now they run a set. I think it's their first of the first half. Vanette can't hit the step back J. And Davis with the rebound. And she's bumped by Rain. That's the second on Rain. It's the third team foul. Dean to Davis. Not confident in the three, and she ends up getting pickpocketed by Vanette. Vanette, unable to finish. Suzanne, she's got it and has some room to run. Steps into the three, bullseye! With Andrea in her face to boot. Gilreath with 21. Rain's pass intercepted by Dean, and Gilreath picks it up. This time she gets the pass off to Dean before they have a chance to double her. Frazier. Bounces to Davis. She'll launch the three now and hit it. Fridley making things interesting for the moment but they still trail by 19, 66-47. That was the first three-pointer for Ebony Davis. Fridley, they'll finish up with Tri-Metro teams and they have some pretty good matchups coming up. They'll get De La Salle one more time at their place on the 11th and that was a game where they were in contention until the end. Uh, but some other winnable games on the horizon, they get South St. Paul, uh, Brooklyn Center, in the case of Brooklyn Center, that's a game where it's a bit of an awkward scenario, and that actually has hurt Suzanne's uh, three-point totals because Brooklyn Center just doesn't have much of a program, as our camera guy can attest to. <laughs> and so Fridley doesn't send their full complement of players for those matchups. That being said... There is a chance that Suzanne could break her own record for most three-pointers in a season. Vanette right behind her, and she adds to her total. Vanette with 23. This is old school Como Park in terms of the scoring distribution. And that's a double dribble violation on Shepard and an unfortunate miscue after she forced a steal. But Como Park, Still in full control, 69-47. And as Kevin Anderson noted during halftime, their speed is just far too much for Fridley right now. Davis is blocked. But Jones can't quite hang on to it. And she and Andrea share a laugh. You can't fault hustle. But Fridley will get another try. Dean didn't like the entry feat, so she'll go back out to Frazier. 
Davis again. Can't bank it, but Schwinn gets the rebound, bounces over to Dean, and she's fouled by Jones. That will be a shooting foul. Dean with just two points. Missed her first free throw in the first half. And still is yet to hit. Dean misses both, and she's 0 for 3. Fridley as a team, 3 of 9. Andrea tried to skip to Hausman, and well, she gets lucky as Ebony Davis, or I should say uh, Purnell, got hit with a foul, but we've noted this early in the season. Como Park sometimes not aware of Andrea's no-look passes, and they get burned. Vanette, another three. This one's short. And Gilry showing some vertical. But she throws it. And Shepard with the deflection. Andrea will officially get credit for the steal. Three, bullseye. 29 points. Gilry doubled again. Fridley beats the pressure this time but Frazier throws it away. Braz will go back in in place of Dean. Every time it looks like Fridley is about to make a big run, Como comes up with a big play. And it's been that way throughout this game. And Como showing some offense here. Andrea, top of the key. This one's off, but Hausman was there. Nobody boxes her out, so she fires some 14, can't hit, and Gilreath is fouled by Jackson. It's the first on the eighth grader, but Coma Park, once again, not having a whole lot to worry about here. And if nothing else, this is just another sign of how much they've grown since the start of the season. Van Nett gets the deflection, but can't get the steal ultimately as it goes out of bounds. And even with the forfeits, again, that may hurt them in section or state seating if they get that far. They can still find ways to get steals and buckets. Andrea Adams gets buckets, a lot of them. She has 31 now. And that will be the easiest two points that D'Angela Purnell and Fridley may get all night. They sent everyone in the backcourt Nobody behind, and Gilreath located Purnell easily. So Andrea knocking off a good chunk of her quest for 3,000 tonight. Used up the dribble, kicks out to Jackson. Another three. This one's short. Andrea showing no sense of restraint with three pointers tonight. Hausman, no. But with the offensive rebounding and the steals and all the hustle plays being won by the Cougars, you can afford to be a little aggressive, but they get another foul. Goes to Jackson, her second. 74-49, Como over Fridley. And they'll get another inbound as Jackson got the deflection and then didn't know what to do with it. And I'm running out of adjectives to describe Como Park's defense. They force another turnover. 
as Suzanne Gilreath was unable to get the inbound in play. Andrea, feeling it. 34 points. And Hausman sends Purnell to the wall, metaphorically. She wasn't going to give up another fast break look. Brass stays on the pivot. Hawkins has it now. Hawkins is playing just her third week of varsity ball, and she throws up a wild shot. Jackson. Traveling violation. And Fridley, they're having trouble getting inbound passes in. And that's been the case all night. More defensive pressure and another turnover. Again, tough to say how this game would have changed had Brooke Teff been, in, been available for the Tigers. Rain on the drive, too strong. But Fridley unable to corral the rebound. And Andrea taking a breather. Probably a well-earned one with her night, 34 points. Even if she doesn't see another minute of floor time. As Davis gets the deflection. It's a reminder to anyone who thought Andrea might be coasting to the finish this season. Uh, she's not going to take it lightly. Jackson. Baseline drive was blocked by Schwint. But Van Ned intercepts the outlet pass and takes it to the rim herself. She's up to 25. There's Gilreath. Offensive foul. Mraz hit with the first personal, but with 10.25 left, Como Park up by 30, it may be inconsequential here. Frazier responds with a steal. And the run out. Jackson throws it away. And even if Fridley doesn't win this game, you know there's some pride on the line here, and you know, they want to send every sign they can that they could give Como a run when we get to section play. But they're going to need to do, be a little more efficient with their ball control but part of that is just Como Park's relentless defense. Andre Adams will go back in. We'll see if she can add a few more points to her total. Her season high this year is 39. I'm not sure she'll need to get that high. Vanette fakes the three and it drains the deuce. Vanette with 27. Davis. That's a foul on Andrea. And as you heard, the officials say 34 shooting one and one because Como Park is in the penalty. So Ebony Davis with nine points will try to add to her mark. Rims out. Hausman with the rebound. 
Andrea. That was off. She was knocked off balance, though, and Schwinn having trouble. Now she's going to have to bring the ball up herself, which she does. Usually you don't want to see post players do that, but she didn't have a good passing target. Gilreath hasn't had many touches lately. Can't hit the floater. And that's a foul on Schwint. That's her first. Actually her second. No, that is her first. They had 15 on the scoreboard and might, might have thrown them off, but that 15 was for Andrea. Van Ed. Wipe that away, an offensive foul away from the ball. No, it was on Van Ed. Team control, so no free throws awarded to Fridley, but with 8.42 left, Como Park under no signs of stress here. It appears they'll go to 14 and five. And Gilreath intercepted by Adams. She goes behind the back and Hausman can't finish the play. Jones goes to her knees for the rebound. And Como will call a timeout to settle things down. 81-51 the score, the Cougars should finish with the win here, and if they do, they would go to 14 and five, and Fridley would fall to 10 and eight. Como Park will likely get the one seed and a first round bye in their section. The way things are right now. And we mentioned in the first half, Como Park trying to get more distribution and balance in their offense so that it's not solely dependent on Andrea. Now, when we get to the playoffs, it will be interesting to see if anything changes because, as you can imagine, the top players are going to want to try to step up for their teams. But Como Park has a lot of pieces to suggest that they could make some noise in the 3A field. Orno is still the number one team, and it's going to be their tournament to lose the way things stand right now. But it's hard not to see the wins that Como Park has recorded, and those two forfeits against Waconia and Providence were wins originally. Andrea missing the three. She went with the rebound. And there's Gilreath. She's going to evade the pressure. Bounces over to Hawkins, and Hawkins is fouled. Hawkins, again, did not play a single minute of varsity until about three weeks ago. But her work ethic, her determination, and her enthusiasm to get better as a player has created this opportunity as she gets on the board. Retta Penning says she'll do whatever you ask her to do, and she went to a lot of the off-season workouts and strength training and considers Abby Dean a role model in terms of where she wants to be. And one part of that is Abby took a similar trajectory coming up from the lower levels. Vanette, three on the way, swish. And 31 for Michaela Van Nett. And Gilreath doubled up again. Schwinn finds Hawkins. She gets the pass off, and free throws are coming for Morgan Teff, the younger sister of Brooke Teff. Como Park with 10 fouls, so Fridley in the double bonus here. But we're effectively in stat padding time. Shepard returns to the floor for the Cougars. The one thing we really haven't seen when I spoke to Eric Redepenning is a team who, in the case of Fridley, has been at full strength. He feels confident that Fridley could play an upset bid 
once they get all the pieces together. Andrea to Shepard. Stutter steps and is blocked by Schwent. Suzanne Gilreath has it. She's going to try to beat Andrea to the rim and floats it in. Suzanne Gilreath. We haven't heard much of her in the second half, but she does push her total to 23. Vanette, left wing. Off the rim. And the rebound will go to Fridley. Dean. Remember, you can't move on a dead ball play. Hawkins drives and has a chance at three. Hausman hit with their fourth personal. So Como Park showing some signs of sloppiness on defense here in the second half. And that's actually her fifth personal foul. So Hausman will foul out of the game. And even with this game out of reach, Fridley has prevented it from reaching the mercy rule range. A couple of offensive rebounds and more free throws coming as Andrea Adams fouls Abby Dean. We mentioned Abby Dean being a role model for Hawkins in terms of not taking a starting role for granted on the varsity team. And the hope is that for someone like Suzanne, and that she can be a role model for some other players here. Fridley doesn't have a long history of D1 athletes. Andrea Adams missing the triple, and Coma Park in a similar position themselves. Andrea, I should say that was Suzanne getting a little bit of a push off, but could not hit the three. Scrum for the ball is going to be won by Fridley because Andrea fell out of bounds. 6.28 left. 84-58. Suzanne, deep three. That's going to be off. And Jones will get the rebound. Rain bounces over to Jones, and Jones wasn't ready for it. Now she'll go to Vanette. Off the screen, can't hit the three from the corner. Suzanne Gilby with the rebound. Suzanne lost the dribble. And Shepard will scoop it up. Doesn't have the speed for a fast break play, so she'll have to go back out. Alina Jones fires the elbow J and can't bank it in. Gilby with the rebound. Andrea cuts off the lane. And Shepard gets the deflection off of Suzanne Gilby's pass. 5.28 left in regulation. And subs coming in. Davis will take the floor for Morgan Tapp. Suzanne, she's got a two on one, finds Hawkins, and Hawkins will shoot two. Hawkins misses both. If nothing else, this will give Fridley a chance to get some notes and take some steps that could help them later on, getting a chance to play without Brooke Teff. And when you don't have advance notice, 
like they did today, it's always tough to adjust on the fly. So at the very least, they'll get an idea of how to compensate against a high caliber team like Como Park and apply that going forward. Suzanne gets a step back on Andrea and it's pure. Suzanne up to 26. Andrea answers back, but can't hit it. I'm not sure how many shots she's taken tonight, but 34 points, you can't sneeze at that. And it looks like Fridley's going to avoid the mercy rule range. So there's some pride in that. And Gilry's showing a little bit of her stutter step moves there as she hits the mid-range J. She's up to 28 now. Andrea trying to bait Suzanne. And she's hit with the offensive foul. Fridley trying the outlet pass. Vanette picks it off. Shepard on the line. Can't hit the two. Elena Jones all board. She'll kick out to Jackson, who will take the three. And that's strong. Schwent with the rebound. Call Park. They took control of this one early. Fridley made some moves here and there, but Coma Park proving to be too much. So even though Fridley has been on a scoring run as of late. It's going to be hard to look at the score and not consider Como Park a front runner. But again, these are all building blocks and this is why players continue to go at it with 100% effort even if the outcome is decided because every team makes the postseason through their sections. And against a section foe that you could see in the playoffs, you'd only get so much time for game simulation. Because practices can't replicate the situations you encounter in games. Davis' shot is blocked. It will stay with Fridley. 84-64 is our score. Suzanne Gilreath misses, Schwinn has it, takes it up and unable to put it in. Hawkins is blocked and Como Park's interior defense holds serve there. Autumn Tucker fires the three off the rim. Hawkins with the rebound. That's going to be a backcourt violation. Hawkins was in trouble and didn't realize she crossed the timeline. But you only get 36 minutes in these non-conference games to get a glimpse of your opponent that you could see in the playoffs. And so coaches are going to take this a little more seriously than they might in a conference game because they want to get a sense of how their players will perform in certain circumstances. And that's why you, know, you see Fridley fighting back. Van Nett, that was deflected. Fridley will let it bounce out. Andre Adams is going to come back on the floor for the final 251. And Van Nett will take a seat. Fatigue might be a factor, but Van Nett with 30 points. Just shy of a season and career high for the sophomore, but I'm sure many more of those games are ahead. Shepard missing the baseline jumper. Hawkins with the rebound. Fridley will take over. That ball, nice kick save by our camera guy, Randy down there, by the way. Hawkins for the two. And we've seen that a few times. Fridley able to break the full court press from Como. Andrea is gonna fight through the hole and comes up strong. 
2.15 to go. Davis steps into a three, can't bank it. Hawkins, rebound, put back. And Alexis Gray Lawson will call a timeout. Fridley down by 16, and Como still going to win this game, but if you're Alexis Gray Lawson, you cannot be pleased with the defensive lapses in the last few minutes. And it's hard to say what the reasons might be. You know, Como maybe taking this a little more lightly with such a big lead. They led by as much as 31. <laughs> And Como Park's scoring drought is another reason. Like we say, though, if you're in a shooting slump, that's often a good window for the other team to bounce back, and that happens at any level. By the way, Adam, it's Como Park, not Park. They don't start with Park. <laughs> Adam, though, sharing a very astute observation. And now Como nearly throws it away. Jackson does recover and throws up a wild shot. All right, Fridley with another chance here to pad their numbers. And this is being done without Suzanne's help. Andrea with the steal, one on one. Tried to bounce to Jackson and that's picked off by Davis. Davis, she's gonna almost take it herself and Jones comes up with the block. She's got a one on one with Purnell now. Purnell trying to set the screen or get her body set in time, but she took a little bit of a step, and so Jones will shoot two. So Como will have some improvements to make, getting into a rut here late in the game, and allowing Fridley to cut what was a 31-point deficit to 16. It's gonna be one of those games where the score was not indicative of the outcome, but I imagine Como will make some corrections. How well they can apply them is to be determined because their next seven games are against St. Paul City Conference opponents. None of them have been able to put up a fight so far. Mraz travels, 126 to go. Strong games though from Andrea and Michaela. We'll probably get a word with them for our post-game interview. And you have to give Suzanne Gilreath credit, willing to take on pink eye and strep throat. Of course, when you're playing in games, you don't necessarily think about those things, and so mentally it can be a little easier. Andre Adams will shoot three free throws. Still have a chance to batter numbers. Andrea, by the way, when she's not playing basketball, is a huge football fan, although she's torn between the Panthers and the Broncos for next week's Super Bowl. I'm not quite sure who she wants to win, but I spoke to her pregame, and she said she was very upset when the Vikings lost to the Seahawks on Berlera Walsh's missed 27-yard chip shot. But she felt better after the Cardinals beat the Packers the following week. Makes all three free throws. That puts her up to 37 points, so she'll fall just shy of a season high herself. Her career high is 49, by the way. Rain Adams with the steal. Goodbye. Well, Como Park, even though the game's over, they at least get out of their scoring drought, and they're still not giving up. It's the last minute, and they're playing as if it was the first minute. Of course, you have to like that if you're the coaching staff. Hawkins will try to add two more. And she took an awkward fall. And the official speaking with the sophomore forward to see if she's okay. And Olivia says, I can handle these free throws. And how about Olivia Hawkins? 
She struggled early. She had a sequence where she had three consecutive turnovers. But she's up to nine points. She had a 20-point game against Brooklyn Center in the first meeting. And she makes both free throws. That'll push her total up to 10. I don't expect Como to push anymore here. Andrea's looks like she, oh, well, is she gonna try? Yep, she's gonna get the floater. And she'll end the game with a statement, matching a season high 39. And they're still playing full court defense. Como Park refusing to back down from their identity no matter the time or the score. You don't see that often. But this game will come to an end soon in about 13 seconds. Davis used up the dribble and Mraz will add two more points to her total. She'll end with four and Como Park will run out the clock. A dominating 91-72 win. Their defense overwhelming friendly, and they had a great plan going in, doubling up Suzanne Gilreath, making her night as difficult as possible. Suzanne Gilreath does finish with 28, but Van Nett will gain a few baskets on her in the three-point shooting race. Andrea Adams will finish with 39, matching a season high. Michaela Van Nett with 30. And Gilreath, as we noted, the leading score for Fridley with 28. We'll try to get a word with Michaela Van Nett and Andrea Adams before we wrap things up. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Cobalt Park wins 91-72. I'm joined by a trio of charity warriors, but tonight uh, there were certainly no charities involved with these three. So we'll start with Michaela Van Nett, who's next to me. You hit four three-pointers in a row to start things off, and you finished with 30 points. Uh, I take it you were feeling it tonight. Yes, I was. That's all? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. How would you say you've grown uh, this season? You're averaging 17 a game, and uh, you've demonstrated a pretty versatile skill set tonight. I'd say I've grown, a lot. I've grown a lot, and my shooting has got enough since I've been in the gym, and just staying in the gym helps me with my shot, and it's been working. And on top of that, your pressure defense, which you applied until the very end, just frustrated Fridley tonight. How were you so successful in that aspect? Well, I had my teammates. Um, they had my back, and if it, if it wasn't a good trap, then then we'd ha always have help side, and it's pretty much. What would you make of the team's depth? I don't know. You don't know. You've been with this team for 20-some games, and you don't know how deep they are? Well, <laughs> I don't. Second year now? I know, but I think, yeah, I think we're pretty deep. You might have to send her to the bench in the next game where uh, she doesn't know how deep this team is, Andrea. Uh, well, I don't know about all that. <laughs> well, you matched your season high with 39, and you've talked about trying to get your teammates involved, and so your scoring has dropped a bit, but tonight you really stepped it up. So uh, how did you shift gears? Um, I just, I've been feeling a lot better about my shot, you know, and it's, it was just flowing. I wasn't forcing anything, and... I felt like our t teammates were still involved, so everything just worked out. We both had a good game finally, so, and then this is the result. You did have a stretch in the second where you, I think, went about five minutes without scoring. I'm guessing you'll work on that in future games, but uh, how do you come overcome a stretch like that so it doesn't uh, burn you in the postseason? Um, it just has to probably stay, keep the foot on the gas most of the time. Um, my break should be 
you know, on timeouts and stuff. So that's just something I got to work on. What was it like having to go up against Suzanne? I noticed you two were on each other uh, several possessions. It was fun. It was nothing different than AAU practice every day. Yeah. So you two would go against each other in AAU? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Well, I noticed one thing you did to help uh, try to shut her down was sending a double team at her when she would try to bring the ball up court. Was that the plan going in, or did you make an adjustment? Um, it was it was kind of the plan going in. We were just, you know, we were going by what the game, what our coach said was saying, and it ended up working out, I guess. How tough is Suzanne to uh, defend against? That girl's shot is too quick, man. It's so quick. It's hard, to, it's hard for anybody to guard her, which is why she's so successful, because that shot is quick, and she's just so quick off the dribble and everything else. So. All right, we've been talking about you, Suzanne. Now let's give you the mic. Uh, you had strep throat and pink eye, but still made an effort to play this game. And so how do you work through those conditions? I say it's all mentally. I mean, you just can't give up. I knew my team needed me, so I had to just go out there and do it. I could have definitely gave up, but I just had to do it for them. So they needed me. And on top of that, you didn't have Brooke Taff uh, because of an illness, so that's one of your big-name players unavailable. So how do you adjust so quickly, and what do you think you learned tonight that could be helpful later in the season? Just play that to step up a little bit, um, just to learn, just to stay strong. Even though we don't have them, somebody got to step up, somebody got to play strong, and you just got to give your all. That's all I say, just give your all and play hard. That's all you can do. And as we mentioned, you and Andrea were looking forward to playing against each other here. Uh, so now that you've had a chance to go against her in a game, uh, how tough is she and how fun was it? It was fun. She's so strong, physically. She attacked in time. So you got to stay in front of her. But it was a good game. I'm proud of her. She played strong. And I'm going to miss my girl. I'm going to miss her dearly. But, yeah, we had fun, though. So it was good. It was good. Well, you showed some toughness of your own. Uh, they shut you down from three-point range. And when they sealed off the arc, uh, you showed your uh, driving skills. Yeah, you just got to stay strong. I'm trying to attack the room a little bit more than usual. Just trying to work on a little bit more things than usual. So that's what, that's what I did. Just take what they give you, basically. And there's a kind of a race going on between you and Michaela for three-point field goals. So how fun is it to have a teammate uh, going neck and neck? And how fun is that race going to be as the season winds down? Oh, it's going to be fun. I know that we both worked hard this summer during the power practices, shooting after practice, and doing it now. So we'll see what happens. I'm just keep working, and we'll see. So are we going to see a rematch between you two in sections? Hopefully, we're going to do it. All right, that's the plan. That's hey. the plan. We're going to see what happens. Go with the flow. Anyone you want to say hi to? Just my family and friends. Same as usual, family and friends. Hey, family and friends. The fans out there, hello. And don't forget each other here, because you uh, got to... <laughs> Yeah, everybody too. You only got to see each other for what, 24 hours a day in the summer? Literally. Well, yeah, we were we seeing each other every day. So, I mean, it was constantly. So, it was fun. Well, hopefully, the folks at Wisconsin and St. John's will schedule a matchup so these two can have another meeting. But this was a lot of fun, and uh, you showed a lot of grit tonight, and uh, you two showed a lot of poise and talent. And uh, hopefully, you'll have some deep runs in the postseason. Hopefully, we'll right, see. Right, hopefully. Thank you. Michaela Van Nett, Andrea Adams of Como Park, and Suzanne Gilbreth of Fridley. Thanks for watching our coverage of high school girls basketball. For our entire crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.